Welcome to 10 TV Plus. I'm Dylan Robichaud alongside Jay Plyburn. Let me come back even though I got the trivia question wrong yesterday. Well, you might get it right today. I'm hoping so. Changes are on the way, but in the no. interim. It's so nice yesterday. Did you see how long the lines were at the car wash? I actually did. It, when I was going to pick up Sedona from daycare, I, all of a sudden traffic was stopped and I realized it's because they were waiting to get, there were, there were 10 people waiting to get in there, backing up traffic on High Street. Yeah. That will be the Tricky case business. probably for the next, everybody's trying to get the dust and dirt and silt and all that stuff off their car. This Makes week sense. though, if you didn't get to the car wash yesterday, you have pretty much all week long. Today, tomorrow, and going into Friday, next three days should be really good if you want to get off to the car wash here. But I would budget at least half hour, 45 minutes because those lines will be super long because everybody else has the same idea to get out there and wash their car. Meanwhile, right now we have high pressure just off to our southwest. That will keep us sunny and dry, not just for today, but that will really be in control of the weather through the entire week. Today, as we look at your temperatures, we are in the lower end of the 70s out there. A little bit cooler as you work your way up to the north as we'll be in the lower end of the 60s. But I mean, either way you swing it, today will be a warm day. Take a look at tomorrow, though. Heading into your Wednesday afternoon, we even warm up even more. 76 Jackson, Piketon, down towards uh, Ross County, Pike County. Wow, take a look at that, just how warm it'll be. But still, we are clinging on to some of that cooler air for Besires. Marion and Kenton, where they're going to be sitting mostly in the middle and upper end of the 60s. It's been a long time. It's been about 125 days since we've had temperatures this warm. You have to go back to November the 6th, the last time that we hit 70 degrees. But I'm optimistic today, March 11th, we'll do it this afternoon. We'll see, but I think it will happen. And if we don't do it today, we have two more opportunities, three more opportunities. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we stand a fair shot at making it into the 70s. We'll see how warm we get, but I'm pretty optimistic that we have a mild setup on the way. We get rid of the cold air, and now we're tapping into that warm air from the south, and we see that strong southerly wind kicking in late this week. That's really going to exacerbate this warm-up, allowing us to make it into the middle end of the 70s. Keep in mind, we still have about eight days until the spring equinox. We call it the vernal equinox here. March the 20th, a little bit over a week, not that far away. And as we head towards the spring equinox, we are maintaining this warm air from Maine down the Appalachian Trail, down to the deep south, above normal. That includes the Tennessee Valley. That includes the Ohio Valley right through March the 23rd. So this would be days six through 10. So March 17th to the 23rd, we continue to be looking at abnormally warm conditions. Rainfall will be much higher as well, especially when we get into next week. We have more clouds and more opportunities for rain as we head into our second and third weeks of March, as we'll talk more about coming up in just a bit. I don't want you to forget, we have that total lunar eclipse coming in Thursday night in the Friday morning. This is actually the opposite of a solar eclipse. During a solar eclipse, the moon blocks the sunlight from hitting Earth. Now Earth is going to block the sunlight from hitting the moon. So what does that mean? The moon is going to turn this bright blood orange color. It should be pretty spectacular out there. It all begins at 1 o'clock in the morning. But the best time to see it will be between 2.30 in the morning and 3.30 in the morning. So that maximum eclipse begins at 2.26 and ends at around 3.30. And that is when the whole Earth's shadow, this big old circle right here, is going to block that light from hitting the moon. And so how is it possible that you still see the moon despite the Earth's shadow blocking it? Well, because the sunlight actually refracts through the Earth's atmosphere, it bends and then it reflects off the moon. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty cool uh, optical phenomenon that we see. And so obviously the moon doesn't actually turn blood orange. It just appears that way because of atmospheric gases. So think about it this way. As we head towards the evening hours, early morning hours, I should say, by 447, it all moves on out of here and things will start to improve. Now, as we look at this from a bit different of a perspective, I still have the timing here, but what's interesting is that I want you to see on the right hand side of your screen exactly what the moon will look like. At 109, not a whole lot of change. By 226, Okay, now we're looking at a big change. Isn't that quite spectacular? 
as we head towards 258 in the morning, this is when it will look the best. At 258, that is the time that you want to set your alarm to go outside. That is the best time to get out there and look at it here. Over here on the right, that is actually a real depiction of what the moon will look like. It's going to turn that blood red orange and it will be spectacular. By 3.30, that total eclipse ends. And then as we head towards 4.47, it completely ends. And that's a real time lapse sort of of what it will look like as things come to an end. If you miss this lunar eclipse, I don't want you to fret because March 3rd, 2026, you will have another opportunity to take a look at that total lunar eclipse. It'll be spectacular. Once we get on the other side of that eclipse, Thursday night going into Friday, our attention is then focused on our next round of severe storms. Take a look at this right here, Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. This will come in two different rounds. We have round one, which will be Saturday morning. Round two comes in Saturday night, okay? This is round one, 8 o'clock in the morning. These will be non-severe showers. Could be looking at some heavy downpours here through Saturday. By 3.30, still looking at some lighter showers. And then I want you to pay attention to what happens here as we head towards Sunday at 4 o'clock in the morning. Take a look at this right here. Very early in the morning, before the sun even comes up, the dark green, the yellow on the map, we will be looking at more instability, more of that upper atmospheric energy that could provoke a couple strong, possibly even severe storms here on early Sunday morning. So that would be a Saturday night into Sunday morning event. And then that gets out of here as we head towards Sunday evening. So just to kind of reiterate the threat, a 10 TV weather impact alert has been issued Saturday night as we will be tracking the threats of heavy wind, strong rain, and also the possibility of some hail. We want you to keep an eye to the sky and be careful if you do have to travel Saturday night or very early on Sunday morning as a couple of these storms do have the potential to become severe. We want you to be prepared for that. Now, as we get a look at the seven day forecast, we are back up mid seventies. There's that alert that we just talked about Sunday and Monday. We're looking at some lingering showers continuing. Then as we head towards Monday of next week, we are back in the middle end of the fifties tracking some sunshine, but the temperatures kind of teeter off and get colder as we head into the start of next week, as we will be tracking some changes by that point in time. What a great time of year as the trees blossom and the allergies get out of control. And <clears throat> I, I joke, but I, I love seeing life come about in the springtime. And I'm glad you brought that up. Tree pollen begins to get pretty bad as we start budding, which will be probably in the next couple of weeks, mm -hmm. especially with how warm it is. Grass pollen typically waits until like May or June before that gets really bad. Okay, I'm starting to feel something going on in here, but I, I, I'll take it. I, I no. want to be outside of my t-shirt as much as possible. So nice. All right, speaking of the severe weather that we are tracking this weekend, that is my weather trivia question for you today. Oh boy. Tornadoes can't form without A, wind shear, B, moisture, C, instability, or D, all of the above. Wind shear, moisture, instability. I mean, I, I want to say instability, but it seems like the other guys might be positive. So we'll go with D, all of the above. You are correct. Yes! And that, One that's for two this week. most common heading into the late spring. All right, let's go ahead and give you a bit more in-depth e explanation on exactly how tornadoes form. So you have winds in different direction moving at different speeds, okay, throughout the atmosphere. Think of the atmosphere as if it's in three, dim uh, three dimensions, because that's what it is. So you have the surface winds down here going in one direction. Let's say they're moving slow and they're coming in from the south. And then aloft, you have more of a easterly or westerly wind. So you got weak winds with uh, stronger winds on top. That can create an issue in the atmosphere because you get this turbulent motion. It's like a, it's like a wheel, like a tire, it's going going around and around and around, it's spinning. So you get this rotating column of air because you have those upper level winds which are stronger than the weak surface winds. What happens though, if we can get enough instability, and that's a big if, you sometimes can take that spinning wheel and you can tilt it in the vertical. That is actually what we call a tornado. It's when you basically have this rotational vorticity and you're tilting it in the upright. And so you get these strong updrafts, 
What you need that instability, you need that moisture. You're not gonna do it without instability and moisture. And then bam, there you have it. That rotating column of air, that is a tornado. If it can make it down to the ground, it's a tornado. If it doesn't, we call it a wall cloud. If it gets a little bit lower, eventually we call it a funnel cloud. If it doesn't reach the ground, that would be a funnel cloud. And if it does reach the ground, that would be an official tornado. So there's my 3D schematic on how tornadoes form, but we're getting to that time of the year. So I wanna start educating people and getting ready for what is to come. You ever seen one in person? Um, I actually have not. No, I mean, I haven't either. I've been close to them. They're kind of scary. I think we should <clears throat> well, keep our Well, I've seen a rain wrap tornado before in uh, Missouri. Like we were going out on a chase when I was in college, but it was covered by an umbrella of rain, so we couldn't see it. Ah, so I was very it was close there, to though. one, but it, yeah. But, keep your distance. Yep. Got to keep safe, though. So Absolutely. we're getting you ready for a severe weather season one day at a time. Well, that will do it for us here on 10 TV Plus for Jay and myself. We'll see you next time. Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz is back at 6.